Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, July 10th, 2022. We are in the second lesson of uh, Unit 2, which is entitled, The Word, The Agent of Creation. The Word, The Agent of Creation, and we are in Lesson 6 for this quarter. This is Deacon Barry Taylor with the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is Never Too Far Away. Never Too Far Away. Devotional reading is taken from Psalm 107 verses 1 to 20. Our background scripture is taken from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 4 verses 46 to 54 that is also our printed passage or lesson text our key verse uh, from the KJV is verse 53 John 4 53 which reads so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him thy son liveth and he himself believed and his whole house. From the quarterly, our lesson aims or number one, understand the definition of the word faith and how Christ honors faithfulness. Number two, accept that faith in Christ strengthens the relationship between Christ and the believer. And number three, trust Jesus by faith and action to do what we cannot do. And after the introduction, this lesson has two divisions, two major divisions. The first is entitled Desperate Hope. And that's covered between chapter 4, verses 46 and 50. And the second division is called Confirmed Faith. That's covered between verses 51 and 54. From the Standard Commentary, our lesson title is The Word Heals. The Word Heals. An additional lesson aims or, number one, summarize the account of the healing. Number two, compare and contrast the concepts of faith and belief. And number three, suggest an appropriate action that follows right belief in Jesus. We have a great lesson uh, today, and we're going to get right to it in just a moment. Um, Give a little background, uh, offer a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Uh, As we go through the lesson today I think we want to uh, focus as I always attempt to do on what the text says uh, get a clear understanding of what each verse says what it means uh, obviously what it means more generally and then number three what it means to us or what it means to you specifically or what it means to us Uh, Christians today. So we're going to give a a little background. John chapter 4, of course, we know begins with uh, Jesus returning from uh, Judea, uh, Jerusalem, where he went uh, to the Passover, which is in the south, uh, up back to his home region, uh, Galilee. Uh, And he does that by way of uh, going through Samaria uh, and uh, as you if you know your Bible you know that the Jews often uh, went around Samaria because it had the Samarians in it and the Samarians were mixed race uh, they were Jews that had been mixed with other uh, uh, peoples that had been brought into the land by the Assyrians uh, and so they were they were mixed and not considered to be pure Jews, and the Jews avoided them. And they also had uh, uh, different re- religions or different beliefs. They did not uh, uh, 
believe uh, the same things that the traditional Jews did, uh, and they only had uh, the, the the Torah or the Pentateuch. They only had the first five books of the Bible, but they had been influenced. Their religion had been influenced by the religions of the peoples that uh, had been brought in and intermingled with them. And as you recall, when Jesus and his disciples uh, traveled through Samaria, Jesus encountered a woman at the well about midday. Uh, he questioned her and asked her for water. And you know the story. He found out, uh, actually told her that she had had five husbands and the one that she was with was not her husband. And and you know uh, what happened there. She ended up going back to the city and uh, telling the men uh, that she thought she had met the Messiah. He told her everything she'd ever done, exaggerating a little bit. Then she brought the men back out. Jesus actually spoke to the men, and as a result of him speaking to the men uh, over two days, he actually stayed two days in that area, the men believed. Uh, first, they came out primarily out of curiosity, believing that the woman must have encountered someone of interest, but when Jesus spoke to him uh, about uh, no doubt who he was and and about God's plan, uh, and uh, they were convinced that he was the Messiah. They believed because of his words. They said. Now after uh, he uh, after that he did uh, he and his disciples did continue their journey to Galilee and specifically to Canaan, which where he had performed uh, his first recorded miracle, and that was to change water into wine at a wedding reception. And we're going to pick up uh, right as he gets, uh, shortly after he gets to Canaan, uh, where he is approached by a nobleman uh, and with a dire need. So let's go before the throne. Father, we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word, Lord. And we, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for reinforcing our faith with your word, Lord, for reminding us, Lord, that uh, you are all-powerful, Lord. You are omnipotent. You are all-knowing, omniscient, and you are everywhere at once. You are omni omniscient, Lord. We just we just thank you that uh, not that we ourselves, not having seen you in the flesh, Lord, not having witnessed personally your miracles, uh, we have saving faith, Lord, by the the testimonies of your word, Lord, and by your Holy Spirit, the prompting and the urging of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we have believed, and we've placed our faith in you and our eternal destiny in you, Lord. We thank you for the shedding your precious blood, Lord, which we have the biblical account of, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we don't have to see, to believe, and to trust, Lord, and to know that uh, you love us so, and Lord, you will meet all of our needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Lord. Lord, as we study this lesson again, help us to clearly understand what it says what it means and what it means specifically to us and it is a reminder lord of what faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and how you delight in genuine faith in you again we thank and praise you lord for this opportunity and jesus to study your word again in jesus name amen so we're gonna uh, begin with the first division of the quarterly, the adult quarterly, and um, that covers, again, that is entitled Desperate Hope, covers verses uh, 46 to 50, uh, and I'm going to read from the King James Version. I may have occasion to uh, to read from the NIV as well for greater clarity, but let's start by reading the KJV verses 46 and 40 to 40 to 50 rather read. So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee where he had made water wine and there was a certain nobleman 
whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he should come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Okay, let's back up to verse 46. And again, uh, we want to get a clear understanding of what this biblical, what the text actually says. We want to understand what it means, and we want to understand what it means to us. Uh, so, let's break this uh, verse down into two parts here. Part A reads, 46A reads, So Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee, where he made water wine. Now, Canaan was a small town uh, in the region of Galilee. Galilee was north of Judea. And it was adjacent to the Sea or Lake of Galilee. Uh, uh, and it was, um, uh, which of course uh, fed the River Jordan, which was one of the most notable landmarks in, um, in, Ju in Judea. Uh, and uh, this was a, a town, if you recall, if we go back to chapter 2, of John where Jesus and his disciples were invited to a wedding uh, and uh, as you recall during the reception the governor or host ran out of wine and his mother Jesus's mother Mary asked him what are we going to do <laughs> and Jesus said uh, it, it wasn't his time he told his mother that it wasn't yet his time however Jesus commanded uh, or asked uh, uh, some of the servants to fill these large jars with water and he miraculously turned that water into wine and had that taken to the governor to serve to the guests. And we recall that the guests, uh, the, the governor said, this is the best wine, or the guests, I should say, said, you know, most uh, governors serve the the uh, the worst wine at the end after men had drank and gotten drunk or uh, at, at least uh, less uh, concerned about the quality of the wine. So we remember that first miracle that Jesus performed and that's mentioned here. So he's, and, and just, just to back up a little bit, Jesus after performing that miracle had traveled south uh, to into Judea and Jerusalem, into Jerusalem uh, to observe the Passover. Now he did several miracles while he was in Judea. Uh, and we'll, we'll uh, if you back up to verse, verse 45, actually let's back up to 44 because it's gonna put a little uh, context uh, on uh, one of the, the, the things that Jesus is going to say here. Uh, now, verse 44 says, Now, after the two days, after the, this is the two days that he spent in Samaria, he departed from there and went to Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things he, in, he did in Jerusalem at the feast, for they also had gone to the feast. So Jesus is returning to his home region, uh, and he, he 
understands uh, that a prophet is not without honor or recognized as a true prophet in his own town because of familiarity. Uh, you guys no doubt have heard uh, uh, the term that that familiarity uh, breeds contempt and that because the people had seen him grow up and they thought they knew him, they did not recognize him as a true prophet. And then, uh, so we, we see in verse 45 that many of the people had gone to the feast at Jerusalem also and they saw the miracles that he did. So when he returned to his home country, uh, his home region rather, they expected to see more. They were looking for miracles. They believed him to be a miracle worker. They did not know that he was the Messiah or uh, the Son of God. Part B of 46 says, And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Now this uh, term nobleman uh, could be translated royal official and he was most likely uh, an, an official or uh, in the service of King Herod Antipas who was the tetrarch in that area from 4 BC. So this was a man of uh, some stature and he comes uh, approximately 16 miles south of uh, to Canaan. Now, two of the commentators that I read said the distance was 16 miles. The quarterly commentator says it was 20 miles. So let's assume it was 16 miles, and most of the time they walked. So he had walked uh, from, Can from uh, Capernaum, rather, southwest to Canaan because he'd heard that Jesus was returning, and no doubt he'd heard about the miracles that Jesus had performed in Judea. And he comes because his son is sick. He'd heard that Jesus was a miracle worker, uh, and perhaps a prophet, and so he is coming out of desperation to get some help for his son. And uh, it, it elsewhere, other translations let us know that he was uh, at the point of death. He was sick. Uh, 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 he was seriously ill and at the point of death. Verse 47, When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. That's the verse uh, that mentioned he was at the point of death. And he... Um, besought him he pled with him in other words he pled with Jesus that he would come down and the coming down was from a higher elevation to sea level uh, uh, Capernaum was right on the coast of the Lake of Galilee and so he was telling him to come down elevation wise uh, because as I said Capernaum was northeast of of Canaan of uh, Canaan now, he, uh, again, had uh, no doubt heard of uh, uh, not only the miracles that Jesus performed, but the authority that he had spoken with and the, and the acts that he did that demonstrated his authority, like turning over the, uh, the, the tables of the money changers and driving the animals out of the temple uh, and the, the zeal that he had shown for his father's house. And verse 20, we back up to chapter 2, verse 23, and it says, Now when uh, he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. So Jesus, again, the signs or miracles intended to validate or to authenticate who he was okay we're gonna that's one of the things that we we're going to uh, get out of this in other words that's one of the things that is meant for us to understand the signs were not just because Jesus realized uh, that people were uh, suffering and in need of healing certainly he was compassionate but the signs were to demonstrate and authenticate 
who he was, and that was the Son of God, which, as the Jews indicated, you look at John 10, 32, was tantamount to him saying he was God. And he basically had declared that he and the Father were one. Or he does that. We get to the later chapters of uh, John. So again, the, the nobleman comes out of desperation, pleading with Jesus to come and heal his son. Now, obviously, he doesn't know uh, who Jesus is or the power that Jesus has because he believes at this point that Jesus has to come to his son and actually physically be there to heal his son. We'll say more about that in a few minutes. Verse 48 reads, Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Now, you might think that Jesus is scolding uh, this nobleman, but he is actually addressing uh, a group. He said ye, this ye means he's speaking to a group, and the group there in Galilee or in, in Canaan of Galilee. Uh, remember, he's already uh, made note of the fact that a prophet is not uh, received no honor in his own town or in his own uh, country. Uh, and so uh, he is he, he's remembering of course the miracles that were performed in the and, and there were witnesses again from Canaan there of those miracles and how they actually asked to see miracles. They believed him to be a miracle worker and they did not necessarily care about what he was saying about eternal life and about uh, everything that the Father had given him to say. They just wanted to see the miracles. Remember when he fed uh, the 5,000 plus women and children and the 4,000 plus women and children? They followed him, uh, not because of what he was saying or who he was saying that he was or why he came, but because they, they wanted the food. They wanted to be fed. They didn't want to have to search for food anymore or prepare. They wanted him to do that. So he is not uh, scolding the nobleman, but he is he's really expressing uh, his, his disappointment, if you will, or frustration with the people uh, not believing uh, his words and not believing who he uh, was or his purpose for coming, but simply uh, wanting to see miracles. If we go back to chapter 2 again, John verse uh, chapter 2 verse 19 and this is after he's uh, driven the animals out of the the temple the outer court and the uh, turned over the tables of the money changers they asked him the Jews asked him why what authority do you do this and then he says uh, he talks about his father's house don't make his father's house a house of merchandise uh, he, he uh, they ask him in verse 13 so the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show us since you do these things? In other words, what miracle can you show us to demonstrate your authority to do this? Okay. And he goes on and said, There will be no sign shown you except tear down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up again. Well, they thought he was talking about the temple there at Jerusalem, but he was talking about the temple of his body. Now those of you who are familiar with the uh, the Gospel of John know that Jesus explain or John I should say explains the purpose the ultimate purpose of the miracles near the end of the chapter. Uh, chapter 20 verse 30 and 31 he says uh, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have eternal life, or you may have life in his name, and that is eternal life in his name. So the purpose is to authenticate that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, and believing that 
that you might have eternal life in his name. If we believe that Jesus who is who he said he claimed to be during his earthly ministry and that he came, and, and we, we believe what he came to do and that is to die for our sins, then we have eternal life. And we want to, to understand that while uh, the Jews that were anxious to see uh, miracles or signs and wonders uh, were missing the greater gift, and that gift was eternal life, okay? Uh, Jesus was speaking to them about eternal life, and the miracles, again, were just to authenticate uh, him as the person who could give them that eternal life, the very source, he was a very source of life. So just to summarize uh, my comments on this verse, Jesus was, um, I, the commentator says frustrated, you know, even though Jesus knew men, he knows all of us, uh, he was frustrated, really grieved by their lack of faith, you know, and God, our lack of faith grieves God now, you know, when when Jesus did miracle after miracle before his disciples that became apostles, uh, to have them question uh, uh, his ability uh, to do things or be fearful in different circumstances, Jesus criticized their little faith. Oh, ye of little faith, he would say often, even to those that were in the presence uh, of God Almighty and witnessing the miraculous things that he he did like walking on the water and calming the storm. And when they when they asked what manner of man is this, they he still had to uh, to go over and over and over uh, the things that uh, uh, should have been understood uh, and and didn't and didn't and did not. And 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 actually, we want to understand that the miracles again had a had a purpose and a good purpose. In fact, uh, I, think, I think it's in chapter 10 where Jesus said, if you don't believe uh, that I am who I say I am, uh, believe me for the very work's sake, you know, because of what you've seen me do, have the power to do. But let's get on. We're getting a little tied up in that verse. Let's move on to verse 49. And it reads, The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child dies. So the nobleman doesn't want to uh, debate him over uh, his his disappointment or grieving over the lack of faith of the people. He just, he is really pleading with Jesus just to come down and heal his son. Now, again, nobleman doesn't know Jesus to be anything but a miracle worker. Again, perhaps a prophet that is able with God's power to perform miracles. Now he's read about uh, miraculous uh, miracles uh, uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, a couple in particular uh, from 1 Kings chapter 7, 17, verses 17 to 20. We read about Elijah uh, raising a boy from the dead. And actually, Elijah goes through a whole process of stretching himself out on top of the boy and praying fervently to the Lord uh, to bring the boy back to life. And then later, uh, Elisha in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 32 to 37, there's a, there's a similar uh, e a miracle where Elisha raises a young man from the dead with a similar process. Spreads, he prays at his bed, stretches himself out, breathes into his mouth and so forth and, and is praying fervently to the Lord. So perhaps the nobleman thought Jesus needed to do something like that. He needed to be in the very presence of the boy and he needed to be praying fervently to the Lord for this healing. He did not recognize that he was in the presence of, of God himself who only needed to speak for him to be healed. So Jesus in verse 50a says, Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Now, understand um, what this means. I mean, what Jesus' de declaration means. 
Uh, it has to mean that Jesus is omnipotent, has all power, of course, power to heal, is omniscient. Uh, he probably didn't even know the nobleman's name or his address. How, how could he command or, or simply state that his son was healed, heal him from a, a far distance without, and, and, and certainly without praying to, to, to God, to his father. He just spoke his healing, knowing, up, you know, uh, with his omniscience, again, all knowledge, where he was, who he was, and certainly he had the power to heal. Just speaking healing, uh, he had that demonstrated that he was more than a prophet, or it should have demonstrated that. Now, and it takes a tremendous amount of faith to do what the Father does in part B of that verse. Uh, 50B says, And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Now, you can contrast that to, uh, I don't have the passage um, uh, at hand here, but the, the Roman uh, uh, officer that came to Jesus and asked him to heal his servant. And Jesus started to go with him to heal his servant, but he said, uh, no, don't, don't come. I'm not worthy for you to enter my house. But uh, I'm a man under authority, and I, I have those uh, under me. I'm, I'm, I have authority over those under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. I say to this man, comes, and he comes. He said, just speak the word. Just, just speak the word, and, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled at this man's faith. He said, I, I have not seen such faith in all Israel. In this case, that uh, Gentile had more faith than the the uh, than his own people than the Jews had. So again, the father has to exercise tremendous faith to believe to just take Jesus at his word that his son had been healed. Now he comes 16 miles to plead with Jesus to do that, and he's believing that Jesus has to be there to heal him. Martha and Mary thought that Jesus had to be uh, there to prevent Lazarus from dying. That's another thing. Uh, he did. He didn't. He thought that Jesus had to be there before the son died. Otherwise, he could not heal. He could not bring him back from the dead. So, he believed that there was a limit to Jesus's power. Now, uh, we're, we're we're trying to understand again what's being said here, and 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 actually, we have to uh, consider as we go along here the meaning, what it says to us. I mean, we're going to, what, what, what's it saying to us? It is helping to define what faith is. Now, where do we find a really good definition of faith? Well, we all know. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, gives us a very succinct definition of faith in it and it reads now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen okay the substance the substance is the what is below the foundation it is uh, uh it is some the stuff if you will that is hoped for or expected that we have a confident expectation for this hope is not a wishy-washy thing. It's a, a confident expectation of receiving. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what we cannot see. And that is what the father, the nobleman, is demonstrating right now, that the healing uh, uh, is being done. And he may think that it's going to be a process uh, that he is hoping for he's having a confident expectation on the on the basis of Jesus's word uh, that these things will that the healing will happen okay so and I thank God again for uh, his reminding us of what faith is now we, we also want to understand that our faith has to have an object you know you don't just have faith in faith there are a lot of word of faith teachers that you know uh, I think get off uh, get off track with that, but our faith, the object of our faith, is the Lord Jesus Christ. We can we with, without Him we have nothing. 
We are nothing and we can do nothing apart from him, but we know he can do all things. Uh, there's nothing that God can't do. And we also have to believe that God will do, always do what is best for his children. And we know that he has the power to do it. We know that he knows our every need. Now we just have to trust that he will do what is right and what is best for us, but in his timing. I think where we we get off sometimes is we want God to act in our timing, but God's timing is always going to be right, whether we recognize that or not. So we've covered the first division, desperate hope. Now we're going to move into the second division, which is entitled again, Confirmed Faith. And that's covered between chapter 4, verses 51 and 54. Again, from the KJV, it reads, And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, or said unto him, Thy son liveth. And he himself believed, and his whole household. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Let's back up again to verse 51. And verse 51 reads, And again, and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Now again, he is uh, <clears throat> he's traveling this 16 miles, and we don't know what time he actually departed, but uh, that could actually be walked in a half a day or so, but no doubt he spent the night uh, someplace along the way and continued his, his uh, travels uh, toward his home uh, the next day. His servants knew, of course, the route he was, he was taking, uh, and they actually headed toward the direction they thought he was heading in, and they they intercepted him. They were overjoyed. First of all, they they they, they wanted, and they knew that the father was uh, was grieving and and very uh, uh, despondent because of his son's condition. So they wanted to get this news to him as quickly as possible. So they get this good news to him. You know, the the, the son lives. And, uh, and then he, a he asked, uh, what time did the fever leave? Now this was, uh, the father might have thought that this process, this healing process was going to take uh, a lot of time, but the fact that the fever lifted instantly meant that the son was recovered, his health was restored fairly quickly there. And so the father wanted to know what, what time did he start to uh, to amend, to get better. And they told him, seventh hour, which is one o'clock, hour start, the day, the uh, ancient Jews day started at 6 a.m. So the seventh hour would have been 1 p.m. And then he realized that the moment Jesus spoke or told him that his son lives, his son was healed. And that did exactly, that sign or miracle did exactly what Jesus intended it to do. It actually produced faith in him. Uh, the, the verse says, and I'm sorry, I've moved into verse 52, and we might as well go ahead and reread re that. Again, then he inquired of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And again, the fever leaving, meaning he was uh, healed uh, pretty instantly. Means, and, and, and then, as I said, uh, this produced what the Lord intended for it to produce, 
we read in 53a, it says, So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. So now the, the father has already demonstrated some faith in taking Jesus at his word. And, and you may recall, uh, as you have read the Gospels, that Jesus often asked those coming to him for healing or for, uh, and mostly it was for healing, some type of miraculous work. Uh, he would ask, uh, do you believe that I can do this? And they would say, yes, Lord. In one instance, we remember uh, a, a man coming to him and said, uh, help my unbelief, you know, uh, help me to believe if I don't have sufficient faith, help, help me with that. Uh, and Jesus would often reply, according to your faith, be it unto you. So the man has already exercised some faith in taking Jesus at his word. Uh, Jesus honors that faith, heals his son immediately. Now that faith was in, in the fact that Jesus was a miracle worker. Again, at this point, uh, the father did not know truly who Jesus was. But when it says in part B of verse 53, and he and himself believed and his whole household, that is the saving faith. He is demonstrating saving faith in believing that Jesus is who he claimed to be, the Messiah, the Son of God, and it authenticated uh, the power that he had, the power of God. Again, he had to be omnipotent, having all power, omniscient, uh, and knowing uh, exactly where uh, this, this son was, uh, and, 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 and so he demonstrated the very power of God. And, and I, uh, this uh, belief here is a demonstration of saving faith, not only for the man, but his household, when they saw uh, the miraculous work that Jesus had done uh, from afar, they had to realize that he could be none other than the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And actually, um, he, we look at John 4, if we go back to uh, his encounter with the Samaritans, uh, Jesus actually uh, told the woman at the well that he was the Messiah. Uh, he was the promised Messiah, and in fact, the Savior of the world. Rather, the the men declared him to be that, that he's, he uh, spoke to, uh, again, the woman uh, that he met at the well got the, 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 the men out to the well, uh, and then he spoke to them, and they believed. In verse 42, Chapter 4, verse 42 says, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So we, we, we want to take a minute and contrast the faith that uh, Jesus uh, had produced in the Samaritans again, who were not, you know, uh, Orthodox Jews, did not have uh, the, uh, the word of the full uh, uh, word at that point, all of the, uh, uh, the canon to that point <clears throat> of scripture. Uh, he, they believed not having seen a miracle. Jesus did not perform a miracle that we know of in Samaria, but they believed with his encounter with the Galileans who wanted to see a miracle and and needed to see a miracle to uh, oh actually they they to, to believe that he was a miracle worker and, and perhaps nothing other than that uh, and finally we want to um, read verse 54 which says this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea uh, to unto into Galilee. Now, now this is the second miracle that he did in Canaan, uh, in the Galilean region. Not the second miracle that he done. Period. Because we know he performed many miracles 
while he was in Judea. What, what again, we've, we've read uh, the narrative, we've read uh, about the account of uh, the nobleman coming to Jesus and pleading for his, his son's healing. Uh, we know we read about the, the, uh, the father demonstrating some faith in taking Jesus at his word. Jesus is grieving uh, at the fact, because of the fact that uh, the people, uh, people needed to see miracles and they place more importance on that than what Jesus was actually saying. Uh, and then uh, so, and then we see how in the case of the nobleman, the sign produced the faith that Jesus uh, desires, desires us all to have. Uh, and, and, and so our takeaway here, what it means to us again, is as I said, it, it, it reminds us of what faith is. And I read uh, chapter, uh, the first verse of chapter 11 of Hebrews, but we also need to recognize that God delights in our faith as well. And he is pleased by our faith. And let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So God is not only pleased by our faith, but he actually responds to our faith with such things as we need. And certainly with eternal life of those who placed our trust in Jesus as our Savior. So again, we, we know that God is pleased by our faith and actually... Uh, be, again, because we have uh, faith, uh, God will respond to our faith with such things as we, we need, such things as we're asking him for. Uh, James tells us if we ask without faith, you know, then we're like, uh, uh, we, we, we should have no uh no uh, expectation of receiving what we ask for. We ask without faith. So I hope that uh, we've learned a little more about this passage than we did before. And we understand what it means to us today. It redefines or helps us remember the definition of faith. So um, let's just close in a word of prayer. God, we do thank and, and praise you again for, Lord, for the faith that you give us, Lord. You, you, you said that uh, uh, in your word that, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you also said is, it is by grace, it is by grace that we have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. This is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It, it, again, it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. What not of yourselves? The very faith not of yourselves. We thank you, God, for giving us the faith to believe, the saving faith to believe. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we just thank and praise you for the faith that you've given us. We thank you for our salvation. And we thank you, Lord, for being so very good and so very merciful and so very patient with us. Lord, we do thank you. And we praise you for all that you've done, what you're doing, what you've yet promised to do. Again, we thank you for uh, the reminding us, Lord, uh, of, of your delight in our faith, Lord. And we pray that you would continue to grow our faith, Lord, and give us, give us the peace, Lord, that we can have as we trust in you in everything and for everything. We ask your blessings upon all the hearers of this lesson, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen them in every needed way, Lord. You would bless them according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In his precious name we pray. Amen.